the fact of this crossbow, a would-be crossbow killer trying to enter a residential property in southeast London, shot dead by police. Uh, we also learned that a judge is preparing to publicly name the armed officer who shot dead Chris Cabber after he refused to get out of his vehicle during a hard stop. Uh, this follows um, 100 armed officers threatening to down their weapons and say, well, the SAS can take over from us. And they said, you know, we, we are going about our line of duty. We're some of the most trained people. We do not fire unless we think we really have to. And we cannot, every time we're carrying out our duties to protect the public, run the risk of being dragged in front of a judge as a would-be murderer. I mean, what do you think needs to happen? Good afternoon. Um, it's difficult to know what will be enough. It's a matter of striking a balance. No no armed officer, no police officer at all will ever tell you that they don't see the need for the actions of police officers um, to be scrutinised and scrutinised thoroughly, uh, especially when someone has been seriously injured or died. No police officer wants to operate in a world where there is no scrutiny. Uh, and, and common sense says that as soon as you go down that route, um, you start creating problems and people acting in a way which is not professional and is not. Uh, what, um, I would, what, I, what I'd ask, though, is Sir Mark Rowley himself, the head of the Met Police, said that we are too quick to criminally investigate uh, those who use force uh, among the police. Do you think he is right to say that and that we are too quick to criminally investigate police officers who might end up wounding or even fatally injuring someone? I very much do agree with what he says there. Uh, and as I say, it's a question of getting the balance right. And it's a question of how things are portrayed. Um, it was interesting to hear the way you introduced this item uh, and you talked about the uh, involvement of the IOPC. That's a breath of fresh air, really. Um, too many in the media, um, they don't say it in so many words, but they imply there's some wrongdoing by the police when they talk about the IOPC getting involved. And as you rightly said, it's a matter of routine. It's their job to scrutinise the police actions in cases such as this. Where we've got a real difficulty is the families of those involved in incidents like this are never going to agree with what the police officer did because their loved one is dead or very seriously injured. And so they're always going to be saying, no, something was wrong here. We have to keep that independence from both sides, from the police and from the families, uh, that undue influence on that investigation and decision-making process. And we've got the mechanism to do that. Uh, there could be significant improvements, yes, of course, but we've got the mechanism in place for that. What we don't have is we don't have a forum in which the public, the people sitting listening to this, are told the ins and outs of what goes on unless there is a criminal trial. Inquests don't fulfil that pur purpose because they're very much truncated these days uh, and they're, re um, you know, what they can look at is very restricted. Um, so perhaps there's need for there routinely to be what would have been called a grand jury in, in the olden days, um, where there is a public hearing. There's not a trial. It's a public hearing where interested parties get to ask those involved, the officer, uh, their supervisors and, and managers, um, everybody that's got any relevant part to play, they ask them about their evidence. So it's not just decided oh, we're satisfied there was nothing wrong here, no charges, in an office behind closed doors and the public never see what went on, but it's done in a public forum. Mm. But a public forum where the officer isn't on trial, it's just a public forum for testing the evidence in a public way. Mm. Uh, so I don't police officers would have a problem with that. Uh, it's something we haven't got in our system. It's perhaps something that we could introduce for serious cases such as this. So the problem being, Peter, if I was a police officer, I'd say, why would I become an armed police officer? I'll end up in the dock. I think we've just got to stop treating them like defendants the moment they unleash their weapons. I don't Absolutely. know what happened today in Southwark, uh, this horrific crossbow incident, but it sounds to me like whoever shot this guy dead was protecting members of the public. And yet, you know, he now has probably 18 months of hell to go through. There's something wrong with that.